you lied to me. You <laughs> lied to me. <laughs> you said surprise you. You said surprise you. Oh. My nigga low big shots on my ankles. My nigga low. I drip out all my bar cut your bangles. I go military boys with the angles. <laughs> Got to upgrade the stars out of space with me. Good afternoon, Jets Nation. Welcome to the Jets Duo Show, episode 30. Got a lot of stuff to talk about, but before we get into that, I got to introduce my co-host, Italy Jet. How's it going, man? Man, it's been a long day. It's been a long week already. Can't wait for the weekend. But then, then you know, then you wake up yesterday and you wake up today. And it's like Jets Twitter, there's always something going on. Always. It's either good. Or it's annoying. That's both. And, you know, I was kind of confused at what you were talking about for a second. And then I remember this whole Asante Samuel, Darrell Revis, Sauce Gardner beef that's been going on lately. And, I mean, I'm sure we've just seen enough about that already. But, man, was that just crazy just to see Asante Samuel going out Sauce Gardner for no reason and then claiming he's one of the best cornerbacks in NFL history? <laughs> and nobody backing him up at all, which is the funniest part. Like, you know, you see the NFL posting who's the best cornerback in NFL history, and Asante Samuel's not even on the list. I have the NFL also posted Darrell Revis' 2009 highlights. Like, all that was funny. Um, but biggest storyline today, of course, was the New York Jets officially getting put on the Hard Knocks show. So, Italy Jet, you excited to be on Hard Knocks? What you feeling? Man, you know what? I, I It really is what it is, right? right. We, it, we're we forced into it, whether we like it or not. I think Take Flight 23 is going to be great, too. Um, when we watch Hard Knocks, you know, you know, like 12, 14 years ago, probably 14 years ago, it was – it was it, it was really cool to see stuff behind the scenes, but it was all centered around: Are we going to get to the playoffs, or are what's going on with Revis? Right, that was really annoying. But I understand that's good HBO TV. It's good TV. It's good. It's good for anything. Probably going to be five episodes again. You know whether I like it or not, and I'm not really a huge fan of it. I'm still going to watch. <laughs> I'm still yeah. going to watch it. I'm probably going to love it. Let's be honest. I'm probably going to love it, even though I'm not a fan. But it is what it is. I'm going to be watching HBO. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to have my pasta ready. It's going to be awesome, man. See what happens. Exactly. And, you know, I didn't get to watch Hard Knocks back whenever we were first on. It was probably a little bit too young for all that. But now that the New York Jets are back on Hard Knocks, and it's kind of in almost like the same situation, you know, where – getting like the center of this is like the New York Jets need to get back to the playoffs you know we we currently had the longest playoff drought in sports history we've already been reminded enough and then now hard knocks we get Aaron Rodgers like all the spotlight is on the New York Jets and the 33 team posted something which I thought was pretty interesting nine notable hard knock storylines to follow of course the first one and what we're going to do here early Jet is I want you to tell me if you're excited to see these things on Hard Knocks, if you think this should be something we should see on Hard Knocks, we just we could go give like a play-by-play of what our thoughts on all these storylines are. So first off, and which should be the obvious, the addition of Aaron Rodgers. I mean, come on. I think we're all excited to see that. I think they're going to focus on a few players, uh, especially in particular. I think it's going to be Aaron Rodgers, Clemens, Q's contract situation, Zach Wilson, um, the whole wide receiver room, Brees Hall um, on defense. I think McDonald makes a lot of sense too. Um, CJ Mosley, um, even Morstead coming back to the team, the coaching staff, and why not? I mean, I think all of it really. I, I, I mean, it's there's so much to talk about on Take Flight 23 and HBO uh, Hard Knocks. I think they're going to cover it all. It's going to be a good job, but. It just gives me so much of, like, the last time the Jets did hard knocks. It's going to be very, very interesting. And it will be interesting to see Aaron Rodgers, you know, because this is like his first training camp with the New York Jets. Good to see 
how that whole thing goes. But it's also going to be super interesting to see Zach Wilson, you know, how he's handling all this, just get the whole behind the scenes on that, whether or not he's developing and whatnot, just getting to see that progress is going to be super interesting as well. And then, of course, you know, Makai Becton. I, I really will be interested to see how much they focus on Makai Becton because he's kind of a big storyline and he's not at the same time because, you know, he was this first-round pick in 2020. You know, everybody knew Makai Becton heading into the draft. This is just mountain of a player, absolute stud, you know. I thought this dude was going to be something rocking his jersey right now. And in the past few years, we really haven't seen him. So really just – maybe getting a spotlight on Makai Becton, which we haven't really gotten any of these, you know, jet shows, I think might would be cool if they were to put that on hard knocks. But I mean, I really just can't wait for the show. I mean, I know all the Jets players and everyone is, you know, don't want it. Like pretty much everyone on this Jets team are saying, nope, we don't want this. That's going to be too much of a distraction. And of course you can see where they're coming from, but as fans and as, you know, people that really can't do anything about it now that we're all on hard knocks, I think the only thing we can do is just sit here and enjoy the show because we're getting a lot of more behind the scenes footage of the New York Jets than we would have got another all season because yeah, we do get the one Jets drive and the take flight 23 and the ascension and whatnot, but we're getting more stuff on top of that. We're going deeper into the behind the scenes stuff, more access and whatnot, and really just getting to see them negotiate this Corner Williams contract if it were to happen. I know last week on the show you say it's happening three to five weeks, three to five days before training camp actually starts. Three to five days. Um, and you know, it's just gonna be interesting to see how that all goes down. And training camp does start a week from today. The New York Jets players report the 19th of July to training camp, and it's going to be here before we know it. So just super excited for all that. But one thing we're going to talk about is the top battles we want to see heading into training camp, because this is a Jets team that has just so many deaf questions, starter questions, like this whole thing. So what are some positional battles and really just battles you want to see during training camp? I think it's clear what's going to happen on the on the front on the front four front five on defense, um, I it, it, but it's all about who are they going to keep is because we're so so loaded at that position at, at, yeah. at the linebacker position they have a lot of question marks see if they're going to go with Sherwood or are they going to maybe pick up Quan back or maybe trade for someone. Seattle, uh, sorry, not Seattle, the quarterback position, it's kind of like what are they going to do with Eccles? Are they going to keep Converse? Are they not? Jets are known to keep all their draft picks their first year to develop and see what happens their second year. So we'll see what happens with that. Also, you got to know what's going to happen with the safety position. Is Amos going to start right away? I think he is. Is Trey Dean or Tony Adams going to be on the team? Or are they going to cut one of them and maybe go with three of them? Are they going to go with five linebackers? Are they going to go with six cornerbacks? Those are the questions that I want answered. But overall, I like where we're at with the coaching staff. Now, the biggest question marks on the offense is, are they going to keep Corey Davis? Are they going to carry four tight ends? Um, What's going to happen with Mitchell and Becton fighting for the number one spot? Is Dwayne going to be ready with the rotator cup, that's a hard injury to come back from at his age. So, and is Tomlinson going to bounce back? Is Joe Tittman going to be that number one guy, or is McGovern going to take it? I personally think Joe Tittman's going to take it. Um, on the running back position, what's going to happen with Brees Hall? Are you going to bring in Cook? Is Carter going to step up? Is Knight going to step up, or is he going to get cut? Is he? Is he going to be the running back too, or is he going to be third string? We don't know, but the biggest – my biggest question mark is the quarterback position. Aaron Rodgers, it's already a lock. You don't have to worry about that. As long as he doesn't get injured, the Jets are going to be golden. And if that offensive line can hold up, it's going to be great. Here's what I'm talking about. The backup role. Are you going to have Zach Wilson or Boyle? Are you going to bring in a veteran? Is Strebler going to stay? I know you need like an emergency quarterback now with a new rule that you have to keep a third one now. So what are they going to do? That's it's, – it's a huge question mark. That's a huge, 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 huge question mark for me. And I don't want to see Zach Wilson on the field, but I know they have a lot of faith in him. So 
at the backup position as well as Boyle because you don't know what Boyle is going to bring. So a lot on question marks, um, but we'll see what happens, man. And, you know, I'm in the same boat with you, especially about the backup quarterback position. Yesterday I made a video just kind of going all into that. And one of the things I mentioned in the video is the potential veteran additions. Like, we could go out and sign somebody. Or Carson wants a Teddy Bridgewater. Both of these guys are still free agents. And I know it might be late into the offseason, and, you know, it's not exactly ideal to ever add a quarterback this late. But Zach Wilson's rookie season, we signed Josh Johnson. And I know Josh Johnson's not the type of quarterback a Carson Wentz and Teddy Bridgewater is, but we signed him during training camp after the backups weren't playing how the New York Jets thought they would. They, you know, Mike White, you know, wasn't meeting what the New York Jets wanted from him during training camp. The Jets thought they had to bring in a backup or at least a veteran, someone that's been in the league for a while. So if the same thing happens with, let's say, Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, Strebler, Maybe the New York Jets feel inclined to say, hey, we're going to go ahead and sign a quarterback. Because if our idea is to keep three quarterbacks on the roster anyway with this new emergency backup role, I would much rather have Rodgers, Carson Wentz, or Teddy Bridgewater and Zach Wilson than Rodgers, Wilson, and Boyle. Just because Boyle, I mean, no offense to the dude, he's a great locker room guy, but the play we've seen from him on the field hasn't exactly been better, and you can get a lot better play from someone like Carson Wentz or Teddy Bridgewater. And then the running back situation as well, because you look at, of course, Dalvin Cook's Twitter likes, you look at his Twitter page, he's doing all this stuff with the New York Jets, and he's doing a lot with the Miami Dolphins and New England Patriots. Those are the three teams that look like they're going to sign Dalvin Cook. But if the New York Jets are the favorite to land, and if we do end up signing Dalvin Cook, I just really want to see what happens with this running back room, because are the New York Jets potentially going to keep five running backs on the roster? Which sounds insane to say, but could we do that? Which, looking at the rest of this roster, I doubt that is something that would happen, but it's always a possibility because the running back room has a lot of talent, but it also, that could be some biased thinking because I'm thinking, no, we can't cut Michael Carter, that's my boy, but it might actually be something that happens. And the New York Jets might have a running back room looking something like Brees Hall, Dalvin Cook, Bam Knight in Israel Abacanito, or does Bam Knight get cut? I feel like one a night or Carter definitely gets the boot if the New York Jets were to sign Dalvin Cook. So it's just going to be super interesting to see how the running back room looks if a Dalvin Cook signing would happen. Of course, that is a big if. And then switching sides of the ball, you know, the safety position. Me and you have been talking about it this entire offseason. We've always been saying we need to add a safety. What's the safety room going to look like? And the New York Jets only added the safety whenever one of our other guys got hurt. So why are the New York Jets not signing a true free safety? Do they really think Tony Adams is this legit? The small sample size we saw in Tony Adams week 17 and 18, did that prove to the New York Jets that, hey, we got ourselves a free safety of the future? I just really want to see how he plays during training camp because I definitely feel like Tony Adams is going to earn that starting free safety job, and we're going to have Amos and Whitehead battled out for that strong safety role. So it's just going to be interesting to see how the safety position plays out. And then you also look at the linebackers. You know, Jamie and Sherwood, why did the New York Jets not sign Kwan Alexander, or is that still in the cards? You know, Kwan Alexander's liking all this stuff about the New York Jets, you know, basically supporting. He's essentially wanting to be a Jet. He hasn't made it any more clear than he has already. But why that the New York Jets brought him back? Why do they – is Jamie and Sherwood or has Nazar Dean really progressed that much to where they can re- replace what Quan Alexander was doing? Because you see all these charts, all these advanced analytics of how well defensive players have done, and Quan Alexander always ranks super high on those lists. Jets players want to bring him back, so it's like, why haven't the New York Jets? That's going to be interesting to see. And then offensive line, just kind of switching the ball back again, like – What's this offensive line going to look like? The whole tackle positions, like, that's just going to be super interesting to see as well. And really, you know, let's just go ahead and make some predictions right here while we're at it. Training count, battles, like, the offensive tackle. The battles between Brown, Becton, and Max Mitchell. And you can even count Carter Warren, Billy Turner in there if you want. Who do you think ends up winning the offensive tackle battles? And really... You can even go in center right there, too. Joe Tittman, Connor McGovern. What are you feeling on that? Predict the starting five for the offensive line. If we get the old Mackay Becton, 
from his first year in the Louisville Mackay Becton with no injury, no limping on the third day. Then I think he I think there's a really good chance that he could he could really win the right tackle spot. Max Mitchell coming from blood clots. I get that. That's that's a hard thing to come back from. But if he if he makes that step up, it's gonna make it very interesting. Here's what I'm thinking though. I I, re- I really do. I think Dwayne Brown's gonna have that starting left tackle. I think also Tomlinson. I think Joe Tipman is gonna win the center role. I think Barrett Tucker is gonna win the net the next role. Now for that fifth spot, I really do think it's gonna be Max Mitchell. And I think I think if Becton doesn't rebound, he could ask for a trade or um he, he'll be a backup. But everything that I'm seeing has been very good. So Honestly, it could be a toss-up. That's probably going to be the number one toss-up because Salah's like, "Hey, you have to go out and earn it." And right. I hope he, I, I hope he does. I think he's a tank. I think when he's good, he's good. But he hasn't played much since his first contract. I mean, first year. So I really do think it's going to be Max Mitchell. But hey, Beckton can prove everyone wrong, prove prove me wrong, prove the coaches wrong, and he starts. I'm not going to be complaining about it either because I, I am rooting for him. Yeah, and I'm I'm kind of in the same boat with you for my first four players. You know, Sal was saying all of this about – I can't remember the exact quote, but basically it's something around the lines of Dwayne Brown's probably not going to lose that left tackle job. He's like the New York Jets really like Dwayne Brown. They really think he's this reliable player. But, of course, you know, with all the rotator cuffs, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out with Dwayne Brown because, you know, he is pretty old. He's close to 40, if not already yeah. 40. But I just also don't see – putting him on the bench because he's getting paid around $11 million this season. So that's just going to be interesting to see. But then the guards, I feel like, I mean, you got to play Tomlinson. Duke's getting paid a lot of money this season. And the center, I mean, I really think Joe Tippett can win it. It's his job to lose. That's what everyone's been saying. I mean, we barely gave Conor McGovern any money. I mean, I say barely. He's getting paid a million dollars. But NFL terms, that's, you know, not exactly a lot of money. And, and especially compared to what his last contract was. He was just getting $9 million a year, and then all of a sudden he's getting $1 million. So that kind of shows how much his values decrease over time. And really it just shows that the Jets want him back as a backup. They want Tittman to start. But if Tittman does win that starting job, I think that's impressive in his own right because McGovern was a top 15 center in the NFL last year. So if Joe Tittman's beating out a top 15 center play, I think that's great to see in a rookie and that's only means the sky's the limits for this dude. Right guard, definitely going to be Elijah Bear Tucker. Gets a preach about it's all probability at right guard or really just a guard position because who knows? He might be at left guard. He can play wherever all off season. So Bear Tucker's going to be guard. And I'm really going to go with Makai Becton at the right tackle spot. And that might just be my bias speaking because I'm really rooted for this dude and I really don't want to buy a New Jersey. But we're just going to have to wait and see on that because, honestly, I could see Max Mitchell winning that job. I mean, we know the New York Jets really like this dude. He's a fourth-round pick. Everyone's saying he's going to be a developmental prospect. He's barely going to see any playing time year one. And then next thing you know, he's starting week one of his rookie year. None of us thought that was going to happen. So if Max Mitchell was already that ahead of schedule heading into year two, what is he going to look like? Now, of course, the blood clots could have set him back. We're just going to have to wait and see on that, but that's just going to be interesting to see. Another thing I want to ask you about is the tight end position, because that's also going to be super interesting to watch during training camp as well, because, you know, you know, you have your Tyler Conklin, you have your CJ Uzama. I feel like those guys definitely are going to make it, but then you have Jeremy Rucker. We know he's going to make it as well, but what spot on the roster do we see Jeremy Rucker? Is he going to beat out C.J. Uzama for that tight end two spot? Does he even beat out Tyler Conklin, which is kind of a crazy statement to make, but does he make that leap? And then what do we do the New York Jets carry four tight ends on the roster again? And then who would that fourth tight end be? Would it be Zach Kuntz? Would it be Kenny Yaboa? What are we thinking for the tight end room? I think Yaboa is going to be on the practice squad, and I think they're going to keep Kuntz, Rucker, Uzama, and Conklin. I'll tell you why. I think they don't – like I said, J.D. doesn't cut his first year on draft picks. He always wants to develop them. With a guy like Kuntz, it's it's kind of hard to cut him. I mean, he's so damn tall. 
you know, he had a better year in his, in his senior, in his senior junior years in college, making the leap and making those steps. I know he hasn't really been doing that great in OTAs, but I think overall, maybe they might try him out as fullback. I don't think Bodden makes this team because Hackett loves his fullbacks, loves his tight ends. We could see Ruckert and Coons have a role, not only in special teams, but as a fullback position because Ruckert's a very good blocker as well. And so is Coons. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the, in the tight end position. I think they keep four um, and they put Yaboa on the practice squad. Um, but I think you're going to see Rucker get a lot more touches this year. I think you're going to see Uzama get some more touches this year. I think you're going to see Conklin get some more touches this year. Now that you have a quarterback now that is, you know, been MVP twice in the last five years, um, he only had one down year with with not having the people that he had in in front of him. He could have a an MVP year again. You never know with the team that we have. And that's important when it comes to tight end position. I feel like we are there. I feel like we're going to carry four. And, you know, I definitely agree with everything you, everything you said right there. You know, just whether or not keeping Coons is going to be interesting because, as you said, the Jets haven't caught any of their draft picks first year. Like, that's something Joe Douglas, Robert Salah just haven't done. And maybe that continues the season. It's just going to have to depend on what they see from Coons and whether or not they believe this dude can have a role with this team because the only reason I feel like we took him is just of his athleticism because of the height. I mean, finding a player like Coons is just so rare. The Jets are just going to need to think, like, can we develop this athleticism? Can Coons and Rucker be a tight end tandem for the future? Or not, that's just going to be interesting to see. I definitely agree with that Rutgers statement right there. I mean, in OTAs, and I know this is OTAs, they're not wearing any pads or anything, but he played great. Like, he was one of the star players of OTAs. So in training camp, we're going to have to see if Jeremy Rutgers can continue progressive like that and whether or not he can rename the star. Because last year, he was dealing with that foot injury all season. And, you know, I feel, and I like to kind of say that Michael Ford didn't even really use our tight ends a whole lot either. Because we barely saw CJ Uzama do anything. And the New York should sign him, I want to say we gave him seven million a year. He's making more than Tyler Conklin. We barely even use Uzama really until late in the season. You know, he had that great game against the Detroit Lions where he caught two touchdowns. He made that play against the Jacksonville Jaguars, once you caught that long ball from Chris Strebler, which probably could have resulted in a touchdown if Aaron Rodgers threw him the ball. You know, whenever we signed Uzama, he was this big yards after the catch tight end. You know, everyone's praising him about that ability. And we never really got to see that with the New York Jets in year one outside of maybe one game. So if we can get Uzama more involved, I really think him and Rodgers can create a lot of chemistry. And of course, we know what Tyler Conklin can do. He can be that nice, reliable target. And I really just think the tight ends are going to flourish. And, you know, let's just go with our last prediction right here, the safety room. Do you think we make a late training camp addition? You know, what do you think? How many players do you think the New York Jets keep right here? What's the prediction? I don't think they pick up anybody. I think it's going to be Amos and Whitehead, and they're going to make a decision with either Tony Adams or Trey Dean. I like Trey Dean. I'm a big advocate for Trey Dean. They could go with three or four. I mean, they love Tony Adams. Um, I know a lot of people love Trey Dean. I think Ashton Davis is on the practice squad, but I do know that that's – Sal and JD's guy. They love Ashton mm-hmm. Davis. I don't understand why he's still here. Maybe it could be a special teams thing. But yeah, I think it's going to be three or four and it's going to come down between those four guys. Yeah, and I agree with you. You know, Amos and Whitehead definitely are locks at this point. I feel like Tony Adams definitely makes it. And I feel like you could keep three safeties on the roster. It just depends on what you consider Jared Bernard Converse as. Because personally, I think the Jets play him at But safety. if you keep him, if you keep him though, at the corner position, and if something right. happens, you can move them over. That's why exactly. I think they're going to keep them. Right. It's like you can play him at any – he's like a plug-and-play type of player. You want to label him as safety, but he can play corner for us all year. You can put him on the roster as a corner, and then he can play safety for us the entire year. It's kind of going to be like Cordell Patterson on the Atlanta Falcons. You know, that's that may be a little bit too much of a risque statement to make, but just kind of visualizing what we could see from Jared Bernard Converse on the defensive side of things. But I definitely feel like those three – Adams, Whitehead, and Amos are going to make it, and then you see Bernard Converse. My only thing with Tony Adams not making the roster is 
unless the dude, unless the New York Jets are planning on converting him to free safety, I just don't see Adam or yeah Tony Adams making it because he played majority main, mainly strong safety during college, but he did do a good job carding tight ends and whatnot. So maybe the New York Jets believe he has that free safety ability, but it's like we already have we're just so loaded with strong safeties. Do we really need another on the team? But if the Jets think this dude can develop, then you know we could sign him or we can just stash him on the practice squad. That's just going to be interesting to see right there. But then, kind of moving on to our last question, and we've kind of basically answered this right now, but just to give this definitive answer, is the New York Jets roster set? Like, are you comfortable with this roster? Do you think this is a roster that could take us to the AFC Championship game, could take us to the Super Bowl? You know, compared to the last time we were on Hard Knocks, whenever Rex Ryan was our head coach, you know, we had Mark Sanchez, that whole group. Do you think this is a roster reminiscent of that? Is this better? That whole nine yards. Is this roster set? As of right now, playoff team, yes. Super Bowl team, I don't know. That's that's a remain to be seen with me because this is going to be a long summer. I mean, yeah. we got like a month left, month and a half left until the season starts on September 11th. So we got a month and a half to see what – we do at free agents, waivers, trades, and just see what happens to really round out this roster. I can tell you this, it sucks that Chuck Clark's not there, and we don't know what's going to happen with the injuries, bouncing back injuries. Brees Hall, Vera Tucker, everybody, a Dwayne Brown. Um, is Garrett Wilson, Sauce Gardner going to have an even better second year? We don't know. It's going to be so interesting once these guys get in pads and once they get out on the field to see what this team is really made of. Because of all the crap that's been happening this summer on social media with Klecko and then Revis and Sante Samuel, I mean, same old Jets. It's the same old Jets. But I do believe in this team that we can make the playoffs. I just want to see a full picture of what this the final roster looks like, and then I can answer that question going forward. And that's a really great answer to that, you know, because on paper, this looks like a playoff, a playoff team, caliber. Hundred percent. Right. Like it checks all the boxes. Like every box is checked with this team. But on the field, can it replicate? Because you know, you look at it on paper, you don't see that, oh, he's tall towards ACL last year. Oh, Elijah Bear Tucker had a season ending injury. Oh, you know, all these other things are adding to the mix. And, you know, even going deeper into this coaching staff, because, you know, we're talking a lot high on Nathaniel Hackett, but is Nathaniel Hackett going to come back and be the offense coordinator if he was in Green Bay? You know, last because he's the play caller now with the New York Jets. And is this actually going to matter? Because in Green Bay, he was a super successful offense coordinator, but didn't call the play. Goes to Denver, starts calling plays, and gets fired before the season even is over. So how's Nathaniel Hackett going to do? as the play calling, you know, you just got to go into all these levels of the coaching staff. And honestly, I definitely feel like this is, you know, close to a set roster, but it's just going to be interesting. And, but, you know, we still have those questions left answered about injuries and whatnot and all these other risks we're hoping will pan out, you know, which is all this. So training camp is just going to hopefully answer a lot of those questions for us and just definitely excited whenever training camp starts up in a week. Now let's move on to closing thoughts. One last thing you want to say, get out of your mouth before we leave the show. Get your popcorn ready. Get your pasta ready. Get whatever favorite food you want, dessert, whatever. We're on Hard Knocks. Take Flight 2023 20, is coming back soon. I love to see Aaron Rodgers back in that Jets uniform. I hope everyone's been rested up because this is going to be an exciting year. And whatever happens this year, whatever happens in training camp, just knock on wood, no injuries, no setbacks. Give me a healthy team. That's all I care about. Go Jets. And, and perfectly said. We don't want a Carl Lawson situation 2.0. God, would that be awful. Knocking on wood for a second time. My closing thoughts right here, Darrell Revis is one of the best cornerbacks of all time. Better than Asante Samuel. Sauce Gardner, he's a stud. That's what I'm in and on right now. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the Jets Duo Show. Until next time, peace. You lied to me. You <laughs> lied to me. <laughs> you said surprise you. You said surprise.
Money call low, big shogs on my ankles Money call I drape out my rod, I call the other bangles I go military boys with the 